Education Mobile, quality e-learning experience on the go. Um, my name is Toba Refei. This is Fusion Mobile e-learning center. You're welcome. Now in this segment, I'll be teaching you how to answer essay-based questions, especially in literature and English. Now, we find out that the problem, uh, why most students fail literature in English is not because they don't know it. It's not because they do not understand the content of their study, but because the answers are not well presented. And this stems from the fact that in most cases they do not understand what is required of them to answer how their answer should be presented so in this segment we'll just look at a few concepts here a few terminologies and I will just walk you through it briefly showing you how to answer them now first most commonly discuss now whenever you see discuss in a question you are asked to give details by analyzing for example in a poem like uh, let's use this poem william morris's the proud king if you are asked to discuss william morris's the proud king as a didactic poem now what is a didactic poem a didactic poem is the type that teaches a moral lesson that is geared towards teaching a moral lesson so what you are asked to do in that poem is to analyze the details in that poem relating it to the moral lessons what were the actions of the character that is the king and what moral lessons can be gathered from there how is it a moral lesson what informed the writing of the poem so when you say discuss discussing something it means you have to write at length okay so it's analyze analyzing a question secondly when they say comment for example in a poem if you're asked to comment on the structure of a poem structure now of course when you look at structure you're looking at what makes up the poem how many stanzas how many lines is it a free verse does it use iambic pentameter so you are just asked to look at the structure of the poem not necessarily the poetic devices just what is the poem composed of what is the work Composed of for example, I will use William Morris's the proud king again. It is made up of more than 19 stanzas Okay, it is narrative in nature All right, then also sometimes they may want to twist the question you may see something like give a full anatomy give a full anatomy of a poem now when you see that word anatomy anatomy is also referring to structure sometimes they may want to twist words anatomy structure it's also then also if they say discuss the structural peculiarities of a poem it's still referring to the same thing so moving on when you say examine examine when they say examine maybe style and language examine style and language when you're asked to examine something you have to look at something very critically it's almost synonymous with discuss now when you say a construct like examine you have to write in details for example when they say examine the style and language of um, a story or maybe a play or a, a piece of art now a written work of art sorry now for example you are expected to comment on the narrative point of view now if they say you should that is if we are referring to style and language of a, a, a written work the narrative point of view the use of language was it written in English well, did the writer use slangs? Um, for example, if you have read Native Son by Richard Wright, um, the kind of language used there, the dialogue, they used Black American kind of English. For example, they say something like, you was coming. It's actually supposed to be, you were coming. Uh, you was coming. Uh, Mama, don't do that. Uh, you know, they use, you know, the way Black Americans talk. Um, so... The, 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 the language language and style when we talk about language and style you are to comment on how the writer uses point of view what kind of English was used did he use flashback did he use suspense did he use anecdotes 
So these are the things to consider when commenting or examining style and language of a work. Moving on, if you are asked to compare and contrast, especially now, usually they use compare and contrast for characters. For example, if you are asked to compare and contrast, um, let me use native son, Bigger Thomas and his brother, Buddy Thomas. Compare and contrast, of course. When you are comparing, you bring out the similarities between two things. Bigger Thomas and his brother, Buddy Thomas, they are both black. They are siblings. They come from the same family. Um, they actually have big dreams, uh, both of them. Now, in contrast, when you are contrasting, you bring out the differences. Now, you, it must be noted that when you are asked to compare and contrast, in literature, it is wrong to use a tabular form. You present your points in paragraphs. You don't use tabular form. This is, you don't use a scientific method to answer an art or essay-based question. Take note. So now back to what I was saying. Uh, if you want to contrast between Bigger and Bigger Thomas and his brother Buddy Thomas, Bigger Thomas actually was not submissive uh, to the way the whites were discriminating against them. That was why you find out that in his actions he was always revolting. But the Thomas, on the other hand, like his mother and his sister, accepted the way of the blacks. And so that is why it is not surprising that Bolly Thomas admires Bigger for being a driver to the Dalton household. Bigger does not want to be a driver, but his brother is envying his brother is uh, Bigger's position as a driver. So that is just to see, compare and contrast. When you compare, in one or two paragraphs, you look at the similarities between the two things you are asked to compare. Then in the subsequent paragraphs, you contrast, you bring out the differences. How does this person differ from the other person? Now, critique. When you are asked to critique, you are to give a report on something you analyze by giving a negative judgment well mm, it is not so common anyway but to critique something is actually used by writers maybe um, you are asked to critique a publication or an essay or something you read on the paper um, so you give a neg negative judgment maybe there is something that um, you do not really like about that work or a, 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 a part of the work piece of art that you can fault for example we also give critique on movies we give critique on plays we give critique on books and essays and so on so when you give a negative judgment what part what aspect of the work do you think could have been better so that is what we mean by giving critique now when you're asked to narrate of course this is very simple narrate means tell the story from the beginning to the end now you also need to take note of the words you use um, for example when you are asked to I will still use bigger Thomas the story native son by Richard Wright when you are asked to narrate the beginning of the story the beginning of the novel itself book one fear what happened in the first scene um, now when you are asked let me give it let me let me fine-tune the question properly if you were asked to narrate the scene where Bigger Thomas kills a rat. Now you are to give details. What happened? What happened before they saw the rat? How was the rat killed? So you are to give in details. You are, you are, you are supposed to tell the story. So narrate basically means telling a story. But you must take note of the amount of words you are to use. Wayek has its own standard, stand, stand, standard, sorry. So you should be aware of how long you are supposed to write. You should take note that you shouldn't write uh, uh, more than uh, the required number of pages for a particular question. When you are asked to comment, uh, let's come back to comment. If you are asked to comment on a character, now this can be very tricky. It may look simple at first. When I ask you to comment on a character, for example, comment on Yaremi as a widow in the book Lonely Days. Now, when I ask you to comment on a character, they are not just asking you to talk about what the character did. 
now of course we know yaemi is a widow uh, she's a woman with a good heart she refused to remarry even after her husband's death now that is not a proper character sketch a character sketch will look at the qualities of a person now what are the qualities is yaemi as a person a bad person is she wicked is she nice is she kind-hearted so these are the things they they expect you to write about in as much as you want to tell us what she did don't over digress when you are asked to attempt a character sketch you give the qualities for example what are the properties of water let me just use that as a, an illustration water is colorless they didn't ask you what it is used for there are two different things they didn't ask you what is water used for of course water is used for drinking for washing they say what are the properties it is colorless what are the qualities of water it is odorless okay so it is liquid it is in the form of liquid so that is what they are asking you to do you are not just looking at what the character did you are also looking at what the character entails in totality now moving on if you have to summarize maybe summarize an event or summarize what happened in a particular scene of a play or summarize the the, the, the concept of a poem or whichever uh, aspect of literature don't write so much details summarize is quite different from narrate you need to be very careful so you should write within a specific number of words or pages depending on what the examiner requires so I believe having looked at this few um, terms, I believe that this would serve as a guide to answering literature essay based questions. You should also take note that when answering literature questions, especially when analyzing characters and places, you use a kind of tense. For example, we talk or we answer questions in literature in english as if we are analyzing so it affects the kind of tense that is being used for example if you are talking about yaremi as a character yaremi is you don't say yaremi was it is proper for you to say bigger thomas is or if you are asked to analyze maybe what happened when he was running away from the policeman you don't say you don't say so he went you say so he goes it is almost as if it is occurring again so take note of the tenses that you use if you are asked to analyze a poem if you are answering a poetic question William Shakespeare use this not used you don't answer as if it was in the past William Shakespeare use these figures of speech to illustrate don't say he illustrated all right so although it depends okay but most of the time we use present tense in our analysis i know this may take a lot of um, practice it may be a little bit technical especially for those who have been used to answering essay based questions in literature in past tense so it will take practice like they say practice makes perfect so i hope you have found this material very useful i hope you have found this class very insightful thank you very much